that's that's not what I want. I love too much the game. I I still want to compete at the highest level. Sometimes it was good in my career, sometimes it was bad. What a shot to attempt. Just to prove he's a massive threat on the ATP World Stan Wawrinka is done, but don't let him hear this. The man is doing everything not to retire. Stan had given tennis everything, and he has been the prime example of passion and resilience. However, with his current form and injury woes and doubts, should Stan retire or should Stan continue? This is why Stan Wawrinka should retire. No, it's part of an athlete. And it's Nervous, it's, it's good to be nervous, you have to accept it. Stanislas Wawrinka was born on 28 March 1985 in Switzerland to a German father and a Swiss mother. His father, Wolfram Wawrinka, is not just a farmer and a social worker with German roots that trace back to the Czech Republic. Wawrinka's mother, Isabel, is a dedicated educator and a Swiss national. Wawrinka's tennis journey began a little bit later than most. At the age of eight, he picked up his first tennis racket. Initially, he played tennis once a week only, but by 11, his passion for the sport grew, and so did his practice schedule. He started practicing three times a week. Recognizing his own talent, Wawrinka took a significant step at the age of 15 by pursuing tennis full-time, which meant he would have to sacrifice regular schooling in favor of his passion. However, he didn't let go of his education completely, thanks to the flexibility offered by CNED, a French organization that helped provide resources for long-distance learning, Wawrinka continued his studies through distance education. Beginning his professional career at 17 years old in 2002, Wawrinka received valuable guidance and coaching from Dmitry Zabialov, who had been by his side since the age of eight and remained his coach until June 2010. What Wawrinka has been able to achieve in tennis is remarkable. He is a three-time Grand Slam tournament champion, an Olympic gold medalist, and a Davis Cup champion, bringing glory to his beloved Switzerland. His dedication and skill led him to reach the career peak of world number three on 27th January 2014, coinciding with him becoming the Swiss number one player. He has given the sport everything, and it has taken from him too. With so many achievements, isn't it time for Wawrinka to retire? News of Stan retiring has always been around, with fans and experts alike making the speculation. It all began when the player epically fell from his highest rank of number three in the world to his current number 51. So what happened? How did Stan fall from grace? Stick with us and find out, but before that, let's discuss his ascension. By 2008, Wawrinka was rising through the tennis ranks. The expectation from fans was that he would sooner or later become tennis number one. However, not everyone thought Stan had the chance considering the crop of talents around at the time. Wawrinka was up to the challenge and was determined to prove his critics wrong. Wawrinka reached the final of the 2008 Masters Series event in Rome. This pushed him into the top 10 rankings for the first time. Although he couldn't secure the victory against Novak Djokovic, he displayed great potential by winning the opening set. At the 2008 Olympics, Wawrinka partnered with Roger Federer to form a deadly men's doubles, where they defeated the favored American duo Bob and Mike Bryan in the semifinals. In an exhilarating final, they triumphed over Simon Aspelin and Thomas Johansson of Sweden, earning the gold medal. In the following years, Wawrinka continued to display his ability. In 2010, he won the Chennai Open, which ended his five-match losing streak in ATP finals. He also reached the quarterfinals of the US Open, defeating Andy Murray along the way. The year 2011 started positively for Wawrinka, as he claimed the Chennai Open crown by defeating Tomasz Berdyk. He also reached the quarterfinals of the Australian Open, where he faced his fellow Swiss player Roger Federer. During the French Open, he showcased his resilience by coming back from two sets and a breakdown to defeat Joe Wilfried Tsonga. Despite experiencing some setbacks, such as first-round exits in Wimbledon and at the Summer Olympics, Wawrinka's career remained commendable. During the semifinals at the Masters 1000 event in Cincinnati, Stan reached the fourth round of the US Open. His match against Novak Djokovic was unfortunately cut short due to illness. As Wawrinka's career progressed towards 2013, retirement from matches due to injuries and illness began to take a toll on his performance. However, his achievements and successes have only just begun. And if you like to learn about the history of your favorite tennis players, be sure to subscribe for more content like this. In the 2013 Australian Open, Wawrinka showcased his skills, agility, and determination by reaching the fourth round. He engaged in an unforgettable and grueling five-hour battle with Novak Djokovic, the world's number one player. Although he narrowly lost, Djokovic himself acknowledged it as one of the most captivating matches he had ever played. Wawrinka described it as his best match ever, especially against such a formidable opponent. During the Davis Cup, 
Wawrinka and his partner, Marco Ciudinelli, participated in the longest ATP doubles match in history, lasting a staggering 7 hours and 2 minutes. Their resilience and tenacity were truly remarkable. At the French Open, Wawrinka demonstrated his fighting spirit by overcoming two sets down to defeat Richard Gasquet in a thrilling match. Wawrinka's subtle but most powerful achievement during the 2013 season came through his numerous prolonged and unforgettable matchups. These matches send a clear message to the hearts of fans, but most importantly, to the hearts of his opponents, that anyone wielding rackets against Stan Wawrinka best is ready for a real battle. This struck fear in the hearts of opponents. Stan had become a force to reckon with. Wawrinka's abilities yielded impressive results in the 2014 Australian Open. It was in that tournament he secured his first Grand Slam title. His hard-fought victory over the world's number one player, Rafael Nadal, marked a turning point in his career. It was a historic moment as he became the first player since 1993 to defeat the top two seeds en route to a Grand Slam title. Building on his past successes, Wawrinka continued to dominate at Grand Slam tournaments. During the US Open, he defeated top-ranked players like Andy Murray along the way. Wawrinka's remarkable journey also included victories at the Monte Carlo Masters and the ABN AMRO World Tennis Tournament. These wins highlighted his consistency and ability to perform at the highest level, which is why he was ranked number three in the world. During the 2015 French Open, Wawrinka displayed his brilliance by claiming a second Grand Slam title. He defeated Novak Djokovic in a grueling four-set match, which was a personal achievement, considering his previous record against Djokovic. Wawrinka's victory solidified his place among the tennis elite. As established, Stan Wawrinka is a great player. If so, why is it that there is so much clamor for his retirement, age, and injuries? The man has suffered some injuries which, frankly, could end another player's career. In 2017, Stan Wawrinka faced a challenging year due to a knee injury that affected his performance. Despite the setback, he showed resilience and determination throughout the season. The French Open started on similar grounds to previous seasons, but little did Stan know it was not going to end on similar terms. In a highly anticipated rematch of the previous year's semi-final, Wawrinka faced Andy Murray. This time, Wawrinka emerged victorious in a grueling five-set match. After Wawrinka could not complete the Grand Slam at Wimbledon due to his loss in the opening match to Daniil Medvedev, speculation arose about an injured knee, which was later confirmed by Wawrinka, announcing that he would take time off for surgery, leading to his absence for the remainder of the 2017 tennis season. In 2018, Wawrinka's comeback at the Australian Open ended in a loss to Tennis Sandgren in the second round. He faced challenges due to his injuries. Yes, Wawrinka has had so many injuries, but these injuries are due to age. Some of these injuries have been so devastating that Wawrinka doubted he would ever be able to play tennis again. After suffering from a foot injury in the 2021 season, Wawrinka underwent surgery in March 2021, but needed a second operation just three months later. When asked about the injury, he said, I was afraid things wouldn't happen the way I wanted them to happen, and when you have those difficult times and those doubts, you know you need to go through rehab to be able to live a normal daily life anyway. With numerous concerns being made as to why the Swiss player still plays at 37 despite facing numerous injuries since 2017, Stan had this to say, I enjoy what I'm doing. I'm passionate about it. The emotion that I get from the fans, from the people in each tournament, from the support that I can get in matches, is always going to be special. I want to enjoy that as much as I can because the day that I will stop, there will be no return. Wawrinka has admitted he has to retire, but because there will be no coming back from the decision, he best not make such a decision with levity. Stan Wawrinka is an astonishing player that, if he had perhaps started his career earlier than he did, could have soared higher than he has and probably could have become tennis's most prolific player. But that is not the case. Many believe the Swiss star should retire, but he says his love for the sport is so strong it cannot be stopped by age or injury. Should Stan Wawrinka retire or do you think he has some steam left? Let us know in the comments and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to support our channel.